that's Same. Ah, this is best for me. Hmm. It's okay. There is no book for R.D. Sharma. Okay, we not do R.D. Sharma. Okay, we not do R.D. Sharma. We do something interesting. You, your objective is to get problems solved. Yeah. That I'll ensure. So Why? I have two periods of maths in here. You don't want maths? It's fine. Huh? I was just doing maths at home. Chalo, let's start. Okay, I forgot your name. Veda. Veda. It's, it's on? How do I know it's recording? Ah, it's recording. Chalo. You're recording? Yes. So we can't speak. No, you can't speak. No worries. It's going live. But it can capture only my voice. It's synced with my voice. It doesn't know anyone else. It will ignore, ignore all the sound, noise. So what class is on Friday? Chemistry done, no? Physics? So you're not taking physics? You don't want me to teach maths. So we want you to teach maths and physics. Yeah, both. Both. Okay. So, so uh, we'll talk about linear equations, but before that, a uh, little bit of uh, recap on algebra. So uh, linear equations come into this. So in, in your, achha, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a brief overview of what exactly is in 10 for you. So in algebra, we have polynomials. You, you know polynomials? OK, we have also linear equations linear equations in two variables. <laughs> Hello, don't. Linear equations in two variables. Then we have quadratic equations. <laughs> what else do we have? Polynomial linear equations into variables, quadratic equation, we have sequence and series. What else? Then we have number system, which is studied under number theory. Okay, number system. Then we have geometry, and in geometry, there is a very important topic which we are going to discuss, and that's triangles, where you will discuss properties of similarity and all other things. Triangles, then we have circles. We have studied a little bit of circles last time, but this time around, it will be more towards tangents to the circles. This is geometry, then we have something called coordinate geometry. Coordinate geometry. We'll talk about points and section formula and all of the things. Coordinate geometry. Then what else do we have? Uh, we have sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Where does trigonometry? I'll I'll write. Trigonometry is separate. So this is trigonometry. Trigonometry, thanks for Geometries there. Then we have something called mensuration areas and volumes, right? And then in mensuration itself, there is one other chapter called area related to circles. Area related to something of that sort. So we we'll talk about lots of circles, circles. Then uh, what else? Then we have stats and props. So probability and statistics. And one thing I missed in geometry is construction. Anything else I missed? This is what you will be studying. I'm sorry? So this is what you are going to study throughout the year. Perfect. That's it. So you're going to study this. Okay? Yes. If you are willing to and 
need to go with the then we'll go a little bit more deeper. And just one second, sir, I'll use the phone for So, yeah, we'll be going into much deeper details of this. And then, maybe, some bit of 11 period portions. You want? I heard you were going to say what in Psychology. Psychology. What about you? Artisan. Artisan. Probably. Probably. And there, there could be a chance of taking commerce. Veda, what are you going to do in 11th grade? Commerce. commerce. What is this? <laughs> Anyways. Chalo. So let's start with linear equations in two variables. That's what is happening in your school? Yeah. Yeah. OK. So first thing is, we'll give you a just small brief of what is a, we'll start with something called polynomials. And unless that is clear, it becomes difficult to understand. What's polynomial, guys? Right? You know polynomial in ninth grade you have studied polynomials, right? Yes or no? So let's start with very basic thing. Before polynomial also, what is term? Term in algebra. What was term? So yes, I have been Sure. So term is nothing but a, a, you know a constant, constant, constant multiplied multiplied with a variable. Variable and there's a power onto the variable, and there could be multiple variables, multiple variables also. Variable and then there's a power. This is all. Okay, example could be 3x squared, example could be root 2 x to the power minus 1, which is nothing but root 3 upon x and 56 by 7 x to the power 5 y all our terms. How is that root 3 by x? x to the power minus 1? 1 but isn't it root 2? Oh, my bad. Thanks. So root 2 becomes root 3. Thanks for pointing out. Okay, this is term. Now, what is an expression? You know what is an expression in algebra? Yeah, okay. yeah, so combination of terms, right? So you have your combination of terms. And example, so let's say 3x plus 4y. So if you see, there is a plus sign. Yeah, so we are combining with plus or minus, right? 4y minus 25x squared y. This is another expression. These are all expressions, right? How many terms here? Number of terms? Two. Such expressions are called binomials. Two. Hence, this is called a binomial. Number of terms here is two, so this is also binomial. So example of a trinomial will be, so let's say, Number of terms. Number of terms is three. It's called trinomial. Trinomial. Okay. So example of trinomial is two x squared minus three y plus four z. These are all so trinomial, and then. Anything above, you can generalize them as polynomials. Poly means many. So many, many terms are there, then it is called polynomial. Clear? Right? Okay. Now, oh, sorry. Um, we will come to, you know, there is a one particular catch about polynomial, and this is what I'll tell you. So not all expressions are polynomial, guys. Not all expressions are polynomials. Why? I tell you. So expressions could be any combination, right? Any combination of terms. But for polynomial is defined like this. A polynomial is, you guys are not writing, polynomial. What is polynomial? Yep. So polynomial is defined as P within brackets x. That means this is polynomial in what variable? x. And it is given as a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3 
x cube plus dot r dot plus a n x right where if you see all the powers where what is it a naught and a1 a2 till a n all are are real numbers all are real numbers right a0, A1, A2, A3, all are real numbers. Yeah, tell me. A0. Yeah. A0, this is an index. It's just to differentiate. This is a variable, A0, oh. A1, A2. It's not multiplication or not. Subscript, right? A0, A1, A2, A3, AN, right? And if you see, 1, 2, 3, 4, all are non negative integers, right? So hence, all N, N is a non-negative. What is non-negative? Non-negative integer. What is non-negative integer? Anything positive. positive as well as zero could be non-negative, right? So something which is not negative is non-negative integer. So zero, one, two, three, four, all whole numbers are called non-negative. So, so non-positive would also include zero? Yes. Okay. Okay, this is, you know, so now tell me whether uh, this, achha, this polynomial is in one variable. You can have polynomials in multiple variables as well. For example, let's say p x y. I can have an example like uh, one plus two x y plus three x y square plus four y plus five x plus nine x square y square and things like that. This is a polynomial in how many variables? How many variables? Two. Two. Very good. Now. But we are not going to devote much time on polynomials of yeah, uh, two or multiple variables. But then we need to just know. Okay. Now, another thing is, another important thing is degree of a polynomial. Degree of a polynomial. What is degree of a polynomial? The powers. Yes. Come. On. Yes. The powers basically. Powers. Which power I am going to talk about? Power, power of the variable, but the highest power of the variable, right? So in this case, let's say if this, this is in increasing order. So what is the degree of this polynomial? N, isn't it? So one, two, three, four, and maximum is N. So what is the degree? N. N. What about this one? Yes? What is the degree of this? Two. No. In such cases, you just Three. check it's four. Why? Because find out the highest sum of powers of all the variables. So, what is our sum of powers here? 2. Here? 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 4. Here? four. So, the highest is 4. The degree is 4. Yes, tell me. So, 4y would it be 2? Degree is equal to? Power power of x and y. Come again? Sorry, you said something. Yeah. Sir, but won't 4y be 2? 4 by where? What? The degree of polynomial, like the term 4 by. Ah. So what did we do? 1. Why? Only one variable, why? To the power 1. No, variables, not constants. You have to consider only variables. Clear? No. This is degree of polynomial. You understood how to find out degree of polynomial. Okay, so now, basis the degree of polynomials, we have classified polynomials. Ajah, before that, tell me, I am giving you. Write down these expressions and tell me which one are polynomial, which one is not. 1 is x plus y, 2, x, 3, x to the power 5 by 2, 4, root x plus 5y plus 7, then 5, 25 under root x square y, 7, 6, 5, x by y plus 7 y by x plus z. Which one is polynomial, which one is not? Which one is polynomial? So Gopika says x plus y is polynomial. All of you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Next is? Fx. Is polynomial? No. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Why no? Because it has only one term in polynomial. Polynomial? No. So polynomial? Don't don't uh, go by the yes to is as far as English is concerned, poly has to be many. So, but then everything is considered in the family of polynomial. Even monomial will be falling under the family of 
So in whether it is polynomial by the definition of polynomial, does it does it satisfy that definition? That the co what is the coefficient here? One. Is it real? Yes. What is the power of variable? It is a non-negative integer. So that means it is a right. What about this? No. No. Why? Because two is really negative two by five. Negative 2 or, by 5. Why? No, or since it's not a rational number. No, it's a rational number. It's very much rational. 5 by 2 is 2.5. Rational number. So, why is it not? Because it's not a 0. Or, it, is or a polynomial. it is polynomial. How many of you say it is polynomial? Does it satisfy that? Yeah. Yes. How? So, n is not negative. Mm -hmm. n is a real number. So n is a real number. n, n is an integer. So, so you didn't write that. It's written. it's written very much here. Non-negative. Huh? Now tell me, is it a polynomial? Why? Because it is. Why it is not a polynomial? Because here it is not an integer. Is it an integer? The power must be non-negative integer. But it is. What is this? Five by two. Integer, not integer. Right? It's a rational number. Friends. What about this? No. Why? Half. So root x. X power is half, not an integer. So ruled out. What about this? No. Yes or no? It is a polynomial. Why? Because this is real and this is very much polynomial. What about this? No. Why? Because when you take y, yeah, the power of y is negative 1. Okay? So this is correct. Okay? Fair enough. Now, so now if we have now let us classify polynomials in terms of their degrees. Okay. So, so, uh, so if you have something like twenty-five to the power of five by two uh, x, hmm. so will, will that be a polynomial? You said. Okay. The question is. But I don't know. No, no. You you. You learn the definition. Let's go by the definition. 25 to the power 5 by 2 x is a polynomial. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Why? So 39 to the power 5 by 2. 39 to the power 5 by 2 x. Polynomial, yes or no? No, 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 no it's not. It's yes. It is. It is. On all of the variables. This is real. This has to be just real number. Coefficient should be real. Power should be non negative not negative. So, how would you solve that then? Who is asking you to solve? Did I ask you to solve? Remove this. See, when I am just studying something, mathematics is not always, okay, come to the conclusion, come to the solution, simplify. No. At least, as far as knowledge goes, this is polynomial. Forget about it. I have to use logarithms or calculator or whatever. That's a secondary issue. Who is asking you to solve and find the value? No one. Okay. Perfect. This is the polynomial. Now I am talking about how to classify polynomials in terms of its degrees. Okay? So let us say, let us say I have a polynomial Px. This is a usual notation, guys. This is how. P for polynomial and within brackets x means the polynomial is in which variable? x. So let us say it is 5. Is it a polynomial? Yeah. Is it a polynomial? No. Why? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. There is? There is. It's zero. Hmm? Is it real number? Yeah. And it is non negative? Yeah. Integer? So every constant also is a I understood. No? So this is so this is what what is the degree here? Zero. Very good. So what would it be five to the power one? So, yes, you are, for degree you have to just consider the variable. Okay, what if Px is equal to 3 plus 2x? What is the degree? Very good. Now, degree, this is a degree 1. Achha, what is Pxy is equal to? 2x minus 3y plus 4. Degree? One. Degree? One. Degree is? One. Louder. One. Yeah, there's a confusion. Huh? Still can. Why 2? 
I told you each term. Check all the terms and find the highest power term. If there are two terms, club their exponents together, you will get the degree of that. Okay. Fair enough. What is this? If p x again is let's say two x squared plus three x plus four, what is the degree? Very good. Okay. No one is writing anything. Now p x is three x cube plus four x square minus two by three x plus five by two. What is the degree? Three. Now, degree one is called linear. Degree two is called quadratic. So linear polynomial, quadratic polynomial, and this one is cubic. And there are other names as well. So bi quadratic, quintic, this, that, x, y. Right. So we are not interested in the nomenclature. We are interested in. Understanding their behavior is it okay? Fair enough. Okay. So now you are understanding what our focus of this chapter is gonna be. Okay. So this is what we'll be studying in our. We'll we'll come to the we'll you know graduate to linear equations. Right now we are only talking about polynomials of degree one. They are called linear, linear polynomials. Now you can you can sense what's going to be the next thing. So linear polynomial transitions to linear equation when when, does it when you equate the linear polynomial to something, it becomes a linear equation. Correct. So and then in the other other chapter when you equate this quadratic polynomial to something, it will become quadratic. Equation. Getting it? Now so let us now. What is the difference between these two? Both are linear. One is with one variable, another is with. So now you are again zeroing into what we are going to study. This one. First one or second one? First, you already studied in ninth grade. Did you not study in the ninth grade? Linear equation with one variable. Now we are going to. We have not yet started equation. We are still in the realm of polynomials. We will go and transition into equation sooner. But then this is what we are going to deal with. Is that okay? Now, why is a linear equation called a linear equation by the way? So, because it's linear and it's an equation. Sorry? So, the degree of the equation is 1. So, why is it called linear? Why is it not called analog equation? It's a linear as in as a in, line. As in a line. Very much, very important thing. Linear as in line. That means there is some line connected to those. In the graph. Yes. Okay. So, now. Linear equation in two variables. I'm not going to linear equation in one variable. Linear equation in one variable was, uh, sorry, a linear polynomial first of all. So first of all, I'm trying to say what is it? I am trying to say what is linear polynomial in two variables. You saw that, and then I'm saying I'm equating it to something else. Okay, then it becomes a linear equation. So hence, now let us consider a linear polynomial. So let us say um, p x y. P x y or um, yeah or let us say yeah before before linear equation oh, sorry no. in two variables let us say we have p x p x equals let's say two x plus one this is a linear polynomial in which how many variables one, one. No. let us say for the time being we are considering it to be one p x equals y okay why I tell you. So the idea is, let us plot. Let us do something. I don't know what I'm doing, but let us do something. I am going to randomly put x values and corresponding values of p x. I am going to find out, and p x is nothing but y. So you know this Cartesian coordinate system. You know or not? Yes, sir. Cartesian coordinate system. You have already studied. Why? Why it is called Cartesian coordinate system? As in like cartography and there was a guy called. He was a French philosopher and mathematician. So, 
in he he is the guy who introduced this concept into mathematics. Cartesian. So basically, you what he what did he say? If in a plane, or for that matter, in a space, in a three-dimensional space also, if you have two perpendicular x and y axis like that, then any point on that plane here, and if it is three-dimensional, then point in the space can be uniquely defined. Its position can be uniquely defined. How? So you draw perpendiculars. Yes or no? So this coordinates are x and y, ordered pair, right? Ordered pair. Why it is ordered pair? Because if you flip, change the order of uh, the numbers, the position changes, right? So let us say x and y. So let us say x equal. This is, this is let's say four, and this is y, and this one, this distance is also four. So what is the coordinate over there? Four comma four comma four. You know x coordinate, y coordinate, apsica coordinate, and all that stuff. Okay. So which one is apsica? This one is apsica. This one is the coordinate. Okay. So x coordinate is the distance from the y axis, it's called apsica. And y coordinate is also called coordinate, is nothing but the point's distance from x axis. Clear? Clear to everyone? No problem? Hmm? No. So now I'm interested in, this is one point, but now I'm interested in point plotting some more. So how, where do I get these points from? So let us say I I am putting some random values to this x. Let us say x equals to, and I'm making a table. So this is x and corresponding y. So let us take x equals to 0. What is y? 1. If x is 0, y is? 1. What is y when x is 1? What is x when x is minus 1? y is? Minus 1. Minus 1. Minus one. Minus one? Correct. Let us try to plot these points. Zero, so let us say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 0, 1, where will, where will it be? This is 0, 1. Correct? Yes. Did I plot it correctly? Now, 1, 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. So that is 4. Oh, sorry. So this is the third one. Then minus one comma minus one. So this is minus one. This is minus one. So let's let's try some more. Let us say I have uh, zero point five. Then two. So this is zero point five. Okay. Let us take minus point five. Then zero. zero. Okay, so minus 0.5 is here, so this is the point. Do you see some trend, the boys? It's a new line. Hmm? It's Hence, it is called linear. Okay, if you if you just notice, what is this? Y equals to 2x plus 1. Right, so I just got a linear equation. Is it? Now, which is, you can also say that if you have a polynomial with two variables, x and y, you equate it to zero, you'll get linear equation in two variables. Uh, alternatively, if that itself becomes a linear equation, y is equal to 2x plus 1. And whenever such kind of equation is there, you'll get a straight line. And hence it is called linear. linear. If it is a quadratic, then you'll get a parabola. Then again a curve, different type of cubic curve, like that. Before another curve, all clear to everyone. So why is it linear? Why whether linear equation is called linear? Equation? Because it has, because uh, it lies in a straight line on the graph, and it has one Because linear equations graphical representation is a straight line. Straight line. Okay. Now, if you see, what are these these points? These points lie on this line, or not? What, let's let's try to uh, again mention them. So this is zero comma one, then one comma three, then minus one comma minus one, then zero point five. What was it? Two. No, zero point five was two. Right. So this is zero point five. 
all these points, see all these pairs represent a point on the plane, yes or no? Now on the same plane, these points are lying on which line? Correct. All these points, in our alternatively we can say, all these point ordered, you know, whatever you know the coordinates are, if you deploy there, the equation gets satisfied. So hence, guys, we call these as roots to this solution. All these are, what are, what are they called? Roots slash solution. Equation. Clear? Clear? This is got? Now. OK, so how many roots are there in this linear equation? Huh? Infinite. infinite because there are lots of infinitely many points are there so this is clear right so now tell me infinitely roots infinite now problem is uh, or let's say you know uh, why we are studying pair of linear equations is this now let us say I have another line let us say y equals let us say we have another line y equals minus 2x plus 1. Another line. Another line. So let's let's try and plot that. So I'll use here. So y is equal to negative 2x plus 1. Let me say this is x, this is y. What is x? If x is 0, what is y? 1. 1. Tell me, Gopika, what is y when x is minus 1? Ishani, x is 1. Y is? Shreya, x is 2. Minus 3. And Veda, x is minus 2. x is minus 2. OK. Let us use another color chalk to represent these points. 0 comma 1. Hey, we have a 0 comma 1. Already. Then, minus 1 comma 3. Minus 1 comma. Then, 1 comma minus 1. 1 comma minus 1. Then, 2 comma 3. 2 comma minus 3. And then, minus 2 comma 5. Do you see a trend again? A line. So, no. so I have to a curve. No, not curve. It will be straight. This is because my drawing is not that great. Okay. Retrofit. Minus two comma. Sorry, this was one comma two comma minus three. So. Correct? Are these two lines intersecting? Yes. Where? Zero right? Now this point is called 0, 1, 6, both on that line. Which line? Y equals to 2x plus 1. And the moment I change, did you notice? The moment I change the value of 2, I mean, the coefficient of x, the line itself got changed. So it is now this one. Correct? So this one is new line and these, these two are intersecting. If there are two lines, either they will intersect or they will be parallel or they will superimpose each other. Three conditions. Here it is what condition? It is intersecting. What is the point? 0, 1. Now 0, 1 geometrically sits on both the lines. Correct? And 0, 1 algebraic, algebraically satisfies both the equations. y equals to 2x plus 1 as well as y equals to minus 2x plus 1. So we say that 0, 1 is the solution to the pair of linear equations. You understood? So hence we say, so what is the inference or what is the conclusion? The conclusion is, we say 0, 1 is the solution to the pair, pair of linear equations 
linear equations, what all? We have a pair, right? See, if you had only one equation, you had infinitely many solutions. But the moment there are two, two linear equations, now you are getting only one, right? And only one when they are intersecting. If they are superimposing on each other, that means if I had another line superimposing on each other, then both the linear equations would have infinitely many points in common, so infinitely many solutions. Agree? Yep. So hence, 0, 1 is a solution to the pair of linear equations or, or system of linear equations also it is called at times. So pair of linear equations, what where pair? y equals to 2x plus 1 and y equals negative 2x. You understood? This is called solution of a pair of linear equations. It could be a case where, let's say, okay, let us plot another equation which is, let's say, y equals 2x plus 3. Another equation. Let us let us let us try to plot plot that. So huh? yeah, so here let us say now x and y. And what is this? Y equals to 2x plus 3. Now tell me. Gopika, x is 0. Y is 8, 5. No, 3. Sorry. X is minus 1. Shreya. 1. 1. Ishani, 1. Five. Veda, when x is 2, 7, seven. Anurag, when it is minus 2, okay, x is minus 2, it's minus 1. Let us now plot the different color. So 0, 3, where is 0, 3? 0, 1, 2, 3. Next, minus 1, comma 1. Minus 1, comma 1. This. Then, 1, comma 5. 1, 5. Then, 2, comma 7. 2, 6, let's say 7. Do you see a trend again? But does this line cut the first line? No. Parallel. Parallel. So, hence, there are. Okay, now look closely onto these two lines. What is the difference? And what is the similarity? similarity. Y equals to 2x, y equals to 2x is same. Only difference is? So what is the inference? If the coefficient of y and coefficient of x in any pair of two equations are same, then the lines are going to be parallel. But make sure that these two, we will talk about this uh, this thing also. But make sure the ratio of this, actually how it works is the ratio of the coefficient of y must be equal to ratio of the coefficient of x's, but must not be equal to the ratio of the constant terms. We'll talk about all these a little later, okay? But we just have this idea in your head. So, what are the what are the possibilities of two lines now? Either they will be intersecting, or they will be parallel, or they will be superimposing each other, right? So how it superimposes? For example, if you have this equation, two y equals to four x plus two. If you solve this, yeah. So if it's parallel, we'll we'll come to consistency. When it is parallel, it is called inconsistent. Okay, when it is not parallel, it is consistent. Consistent means consistency means we'll find solution, but inconsistency means we'll not find solution. So hence, only in case of parallel lines, we'll not find. So, but then it's going to be learned that parallel lines are inconsistent and have no solution. That's what consistent and have no solution. No, inconsistent. Inconsistent. If they are infinite and consistent, if they intersect, then the consistent and have no unique yeah. solution. The they have okay. consistent and don't have Fair enough. Okay. So this is how? Okay. okay. Now. Now let us let us first understand. Um, next is you know the conditions of what you're talking about. Consistency and inconsistency. Let's talk about. But before that, let us now generalize this, whatever we have learned.
Okay. Now, what is consistency? Cons consistency of what? Pair of? Of a system of? We call it usually system or pair. It is, it is more than two, it will become the system of linear equation. Of linear. Now what, how do we, you know, actually find out, uh, uh, let's say, what is the general expression for a linear equation in two variables, a system of, so there are, this is how now I am defining first of all, what is a pair of system or pair of linear equations, so what are there? So let's say a1x plus b1y plus c1 equals 0, okay, this is equation number? This is a general form of a linear equation in two variables, where a1, b1, c1 are all real numbers you all already know. Now second is a2x plus b2y plus c2 equals 0. This is equation number 1. Now, what is it? Uh, yes, where, where a1 a2, B1, B2, and C1, C2 are real numbers, are real numbers, are real numbers, such that, such that, A1 square plus B1 square should not be equal to zero, and A2 square plus B2 square should not be equal to zero. Why am I giving you these constraints. This is simply to, to say that both A1 and B1 cannot be 0. So why, why, why this square? Because the only condition, only way to express this that, it's like in your, in your computers, you know, both A1 and B1 cannot be simultaneously 0. And gate. Sorry. I'll tell you. So A, A1 cannot be 0. And see, in this case, a1 square plus b1 square should not be equal to 0 is a method or is a mechanism to say what, what am I con con you know, conveying through this? That both of them cannot be 0 simultaneously. When I say that, why? Look at this expression. Achha, let us talk about this. a square plus b square is equal to 0. When is this possible? So when both are 0. Right? Is it possible when one is non-zero, another is zero, and then sum is zero? No. A square plus B square is zero only and only, only when A as well as B both are zero. Zero. Correct. Now, if if I have to tell you that both A and B should not be zero, then I should I must tell you that yes or no? So Correct. But why the square? Because. Uh, in any other case, you will not be able to say that. So, for example, you take a plus b equal to zero. Okay, sir. Is it possible for a plus b to be zero, but a and b to be non-zero? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is possible. When a is one, b is minus one. Correct. But there is no way. See, we have to basically communicate this fact that. Okay. Both A and B cannot be together zero. And the only way of expressing that is this. In all other cases, you will get clear. So hence, please understand this. This only communicates, don't get confused by this. This only communicates that at the same time, both A1 and B1 cannot be, one of them can be zero, but not both. Clear, Veda? Clear? So this is the definition of, let's say, or this is how a system of pair of linear equations are expressed. Now what I am talking about, whether you will get solution or not. How do I know whether this is parallel, this is not parallel, what? How do I know? So let us do some mathematics around it and this is what I am going to do. Now what did we understand about solution? The line must intersect. When the line must, when the line intersects, that means that particular x and y value will be in both of them 
both both of these equations will be satisfied by that x and y. So let us first express this first equation like this. Can I write this equation as b1 y equals minus a1 x minus c1, correct? Rearranging. I took, took a1 x and c1 on the right hand side. Can I write like can I write like that? All of you agree? Vida agrees? Both of you agree? Agree? Okay. Wherever you don't understand, stop. Next. Can I not say y equals minus a1 by b1, x minus c1 by b1? Yes, no. Agree, disagree. Hello. Shine it I just now divided the entire equation by b1. So I took this b1 on the right hand side. What will happen? I will have to divide the entire equation by b1. So this by b1, c1 by b1. Am I right? Yep. Similarly, if you do this, you will get y is equal to minus a2 by b2 x minus c2 by b2. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, A1, X1, B1. so both are intersecting. That means the y coordinate of that intersection is there will be one y coordinate, but there will be one point whose y coordinate will be same for both. So hence, can I not equate this three and this four? What do I get? I'm writing it here. So or or rather here itself. So let us say. These are same, so I can say minus a1 by b1 x minus c1 by b1 equals minus a2 by b2 x minus c2 by b2. Can I just cancel all the minus signs? Multiply the entire equation by minus 1. What will happen? This will get cancelled, cancelled, cancelled. So the minus sign gets cancelled, becomes positive. Isn't it? Now, can I not? Now let's rearrange the x terms together and the constant together. So hence what will y get? a1 x b1 minus a2 b2 a2 by b2 x is equal to c2 by b2 minus c2 by b2 minus c1 by b2. Am I right? So would it have made a difference if you had cancelled out the negative yeah, signs before? Just for comfort, I love positivity. So it's as many positive signs as possible. Anyways, how about you? Can, you can, like you can all, the all the negative, so everything is positive now. But no, but why, the, why is it minus A2x? Because so A1 by B1x, now bring this on the left hand side. Right? And bring this on the right hand side. So it will be many. Correct? Now simplify. What will it be? So let me just do it here itself. Hmm. Can you take the LCM? So A1, B2. Now, can I take X common in the left hand side? Yeah. yeah. So A1, B2 minus A2, B1 upon no upon B1, B2 times X is equal to C2, B1 minus C1, B2 upon B1, B2. This will go up, right? So what is X? C2, B1. Ah. X equals to C2, B1 minus C1, B2 upon A1, A1 B2 minus A2, B1. Now guys, this is a ratio. All C2, B2, A2, B2, all that stuff. All are real numbers. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now this is real number in numerator. This is real number in denominator. So can you take B1 minus B2 common? How? Huh? So, listen to me. What is the constraint on this ratio? This denominator, what is the problem with this? This cannot be? Yes, if this becomes 0, x becomes unreal. Right? Now it becomes 0, x becomes unreal. That means there is a point, unreal point, where the lines are intersecting. So that means this is a, if this becomes 0, lines become parallel. Correct? No? If this becomes 0, 
then line will be there will be no point of intersection because this is not defined that means the lines are intersecting at infinity if this becomes zero x becomes in other way if this becomes zero x becomes something divided by zero infinite it's not true as such but you understand like that you can understand right so that means the lines are intersecting at infinity so what do i get for parallel lines for parallel lines if two which which two lines the two lines which i started with you guys did not did right so those two parallel lines what is the condition a1 b2 minus a2 b1 must be equal to correct what does that mean that is if you rearrange it you will get a1 by a2 is equal to if the ratios a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 same then 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 they will be parallel then they will be parallel okay but for intersecting a1 by a2 is not equal to intersecting lines so for that a1 by b2 my a1 b2 minus a2 b1 must not be equal to so hence you get a1 by a2 not equal to right and for you will get overlapping lines when this becomes zero by zero when top four also becomes zero it is overlapping okay so hence in that condition what will happen c2 b1 so now uh, coincident lines Okay, so zero by zero form anyways is not defined. So hence, but this is this condition is C two B one minus C one B two is equal to zero. That means B one by B two must be equal to C two, right? So hence, combining these two, so for overlapping, they are parallel anyways, and this condition is also true. So combining these two, what will happen? A one by A two is equal to B one by B two is equal to C one by C. Right, so this is condition is a1 by a2 b1 by b2. Clear? So what are the three conditions? If a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2, system is consistent, inconsistent. Consistent. Consistent. That means there will be one. If they are inter intersecting, there will be one definite one solution. Not more than one, but one for sure. Okay. If they are overlapping, then they are infinitely. either they will have infinitely many solution or they will have only one solution or they will have no solutions at all it cannot be a case that a pair of linear equation will have two solutions or three solutions only either it will have only one or infinite many or no solutions at all and then now you know the condition this is the condition for overlapping line this is the condition for parallel line so hence to add to this parallel line will be so to avoid this that parallel but not overlapping will be is it hmm? so the lines are parallel for parallel lines whether see overlapping lines are also parallel so this condition must be met but if they are not to be of their parallel but separated some distance this must not be true this must not be equal okay so this is for overlapping this is for not overlapping but parallel and this is for so for intersecting lines c1 by c2 is irrelevant irrelevant no i don't really care the moment this is there the moment you saw this it will it is bound to intersect the moment these two ratios are the two the moment these two ratios are not equal it is bound to intersect now let us You understood? Sir, no. Can you do it? Done. Sir, please. Done. Sir, no. Done. You guys don't write. Right? 
I'll pay you for it. Please write. It's all right. I'll pay you for it. Are you guys feeling a little cold here? Yeah, but so let's come out of Shimla and come to Bangalore. Hmm. Yes, done? Done? Okay. Now tell me, I am now writing pair of linear equations. You have to tell me which one are you, the questions would be something like this. Find the nature of the roots. Okay? okay. So what do you mean by nature, like consistent, inconsistent? Yeah, nature of, let's say, the pair of, the pair consistent, inconsistent. When you one solution, many solutions are? No solution. No solution. Now, rapid fire, I'll write your answer, okay? 2x minus 3y equals 4, 4x plus 5y plus 7 equals 0. This solution is consistent. There is one solution? Yeah. Yes? Pakka? Intersecting. Intersecting? Do you are confident? Yes. Yes, right? Now, x plus y equals 1, x equals minus y. Hey, 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 there is a solution? No. No. No solution. No way. There is no solution. No solution. No solution, but it's not intersecting. It's parallel. It's they are parallel lines. Yeah, it's parallel. Okay, why? Because the second line is simply x plus y equals zero. Did you get it? So one upon one is equal to one upon. So x plus y is equal to one. X plus y is equal to zero. So does that mean one is equal to zero? Hence, hence there is no. Solution. Sir. Yes. This is a linear equation, yes or no? Yes, sir. This is a linear, linear equation, yes or no? Yes, sir. So since one it cannot be zero, that means they will never intersect. That means you cannot equate these two. There is no. And for the first one, there is a solution or no? Yes, there is. Why? Because 2 by 4 is 1 by 2. Minus 3 by 5 is. So 1 by 2 is not equal to minus 3 by 5. The moment you saw that, that is those two ratios are not same. It has to be consistent. Got it, Vedam? See, what did I say? For intersecting lines, consistency, what do you need to have? A1 by A2 should not be equal to B1 by B2. Check. What is A1? 2. What is A2? 4. So 2 by 4 is half. What is B1? Minus 3. What is B2? 5. So minus, is 1 by 2 equal to minus 3 by 5? So? Okay. Got it. Next. Third. Now, 2x minus 9 equals 2y, 2x, 4x minus 18 equals 4y. Sir, it's coincident. Yeah, there are infinite solutions. Infinite solution? Yes, sir. Why? Because x coefficient 2 by 4, 2 by 4, minus 9. Actually, I am doing it directly. You guys should write like this, 2x minus 2y minus 9 equals 0, always reduce in this form. a1 x plus b2 y plus, a1 x plus b, b1 x plus, sorry, a1 x plus b1 y plus c1 equals 0. And this will, this is equal to 2x, sorry, 4x, 4x minus 4y minus 18 equals 0. So a1 by a2 is 2 by 4, half, b1 by b2 is, they are coincident. Make sense, brother? Next. Find the value of k if the pair of equation. Find the value of k if the pair of equations are parallel. Kx minus 4y plus 7 equals 0. 2x minus 6 plus 6y equals minus 9. Find the value of k. Find the value of k if this pair, this line, are these two lines are parallel. Find the value of k if these two lines are parallel. Find k if they are parallel. Others? Yes, sir, it's minus 4 by 3. Minus 4 by 3. Is 
You guys want to eat something? Shall I switch that off? But then it will become hot. You want to eat something? No. You? So what would you give? Uh, mutton sticks. I'm Bolo. Bolo, bhai. Quick, chocolate. No. Yeah, I eat. K is equal to? Minus 4 by 3. So there's something sharp with the word what we're talking about. Oh, shit. There's nothing. No blood. There's no blood. That changes. No blood in this body. So you're you running on water? Anyways, yeah. Veda understood. Uh, no. no. See, what did I ask? What is the value of k if they are parallel? What is the condition for parallel? Tell me. Uh, that a1 is equal to a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2. Right. So k by 2 must be equal to minus 4 by 6. So k is minus 4 into 2 by 6, which is? Hello. Understood. OK, consistency, inconsistency. Now let us solve some bionic problems. No violence. No violence. No violence. No violence. No violence, guys. Don't spread violence. Spread peace. Chalo, let's give you Hanji. Solve. Hey, find uh, find the value of k so that the given system of equations has a unique solution. Unique. Now, unique equations are. 2x minus 3y equals 1. 2x minus 3y equals 1. And second is kx plus 5y equals 7. Could you repeat the question? Find the value of k so that this system of equation, linear equations have a unique solution. It has a unique solution. 2x minus 3y equals 1. Kx plus 5y K equals 7. Equal to 10 by 10. Yeah, sorry, anything minus but, you'll have to say, anything but, minus right? So you'll have to write k is not equal to. So you, you just take, you take k anything but that value, you will always get one sentence. If you change k, you'll get another set of okay, linear equations. You find the solution on k. No, you have to find the value of k so that they have a unique solution. That's a lot of things. Yes, obviously. So you have to say anything but minus 10 by 3. So 
K should not be equal to minus so, infinity. So then it will, have, it will become a parallel line. So if it comes in the paper, I have no idea how to write it. No, you have to just write K not equal to, that's it. See, K is any value, but yeah, I See, K can be 1, can be 2, can be 5, can be 9, can be 1 million. Every time you get a new K, you will get a two different set of equations, two different lines. See, so one different line, right? As if one is already there, if you change K, what am I trying to say? Let us say these are the two lines. So you okay. have to get uh, now there is only one value of k where it becomes parallel, isn't it? The moment you change k, what will happen? This line will tilt. Correct? And the moment it, it tilts, it will intersect somewhere. Correct? If you change k further, change k further, change k further, change k further, keep changing k. There will be infinite. One line is fixed. One line is already fixed. Another line was this, which by changing the value of k, you are changing the orientation. So always it will intersect with this line, but what, but only for one case, which is that case when they are parallel. Correct, no? So if you get, if you change k, you will get a different set of equations. Change k, you will get another set of equations. Every time there will be one solution to that set of equations. Correct? Any doubt? Even if it is there, I will not be solving. It. <laughs> Next, Veda, you got it? See, what you need to do is, what, was the, what, are, what are the equations? Acha, I'll, I'll, I'll give you another solution and solve that also on the board. So the question was, can you read out the equations please? 2x minus 3y equal to 1 and kx plus 2x minus 3y equal to 1. Equal to 1, can I write that as this? Second, second equation was? Kx plus 5y. Minus 5y, is it? Plus 5y. Ah. Uh, is equal to 7. So minus 7 equals to 0. So, this t two equations to have, so I'm writing the three conditions. Unique solution. Unique solution, Shreya, what is the condition for unique solution? Uh, A1 by A2 is not equal to B1 by A2. That's it. You just need to check this, and it's done. Uh, unique ke baad, uh, no solution. So unique. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Gopika, Gopika. Uh, no solution. A one by A two equal to B one by B two not equal to. And Ishani, infinite. A one by. A2. Yeah. A one by A two is equal to B one by B two. Now, what was the question? Unique, unique solution. So, what do I do? 2 by k must not be equal to minus 3 upon 5. So, k must not be equal to 10 by minus 3, which is minus 10 by 3. k must not be equal to minus 10 by 3. You keep your word date, doesn't matter. It will intersect. <laughs> Correct? Okay, next. For what value of k will the equations x plus 2y plus 7 equals 0, x plus 2y plus 7 equals 0, for what value of k x plus 2y plus 7 equals 0 and 2x plus ky plus 14, 2x plus ky plus 14 equals to 0 have infinitely many solutions. Or, uh -huh. so for what value of k, these two equations represent represent coincident lines. Four. <laughs> so 7 is to 14, sir. 741 to 24. Did I teach so well or you guys are really intelligent? See, you teach very well. So humble. Good. I appreciate it. Yes, did you understand? Good. Okay. Class is over. Just kidding. 45 minutes left. Just kidding. Next. See? Now she is worried about the time. Okay, the next question. Write down. Hearts. 
hot. So it's hot. Okay. Find the value of P. Yes. Find the value of P and Q. Now do. Find the value of P and Q for which the following, following system of equations has infinite number of solutions. Find the value of P and Q. The question is 2x plus 3y equations are 2x plus 3y equals 7 and P plus Q x P plus Q x then 2p minus qy, 2p minus qy equals 21. 21. p plus qx plus 2p minus qy equals 21. Infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. extra Did you guess, sir? I saw it. Hey. No no unfair means Infinitely many solution. Tell me the condition for infinitely many solution. Uh, a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c. Okay. Clear? Get it by heart. Okay. Now what is a1 in this case, Veda? 2x. No. X is never included. X is a variable. So coefficient. 2 upon p plus q. Two by p plus q equals b one. What is b one? Uh, three. Three upon two p minus q. This is the whole, and this is nothing but seven upon. Okay, how do we solve them? You equate these two. Both are same. So I can say two upon p plus q must be equal to one upon three. 7 by 21 is 1 upon 3. P plus Q is equal to 6. So we can say that. Sanda, I'm in a class. Can I call you back? Uh, I'm in a class. I can call you back sometime later. So then you oh. said. So, so it would be the same if we did 3 by 2 P minus Q is equal to 5. You'll have to use both. You'll not be able to solve this together. In, in one, one. So yes, here's the easy. This is. P plus Q equals to 6. Equation number 1. You got P plus Q equals to 6. Then, if you equate these two, what will you get? You will get 3 upon 2P minus Q is equal to 1 upon 3 again. So, these, see, if you see there are three, two equations. What A is equal to B is equal to C. That means A is also equal to C. So, use both conditions, right? So, that means, what is this? 2p minus q equals 9, isn't it? Am I right? Yeah. Now, simple. Now, actually, we have not learned how to solve linear equations, but you can, you can do 
tricks. Add both these equations. So you can just take P is equal to 6 and 2P is equal to 6. Whatever, whichever way. So this is equation. So equation LHS, LHS can be added, RHS, RHS can be added. So hence add. So P plus 2P, how much? 3P. And Q minus Q? 0. 6 plus 9? 15. So what is P? 5. So P is 5. If P is 5, Put it back into here. Q is? One. P is 5, Q is 1. So we are P. It is where? School. Why did you not say this so before? Our teacher <laughs> did the method where she first equated 2 by P plus Q and 3 by 2 P minus Q. Yeah, that's what I did. But and that will I be complicated. You can do that, but that will be complicated. But then we'll have to use only one equation. I mean like you get P is equal to 5Q and then you can just use it in Yeah. So you can multiply the first one by 2. No, solving equation we will we'll see. Is it okay? Fair enough. Next. So, I think now you are eligible to solve. So we have learned after elimination and class. Yeah, I know. So hence let's go to did you learn uh, graphics method of solution? Graphical no. method? So like the graph. Plotting it on the graph? Yeah. No, no, solving solving equations yeah. by graph. Yeah, yeah. You did it in this this year. Yeah. Yes, so, so, so now solve it by graph means like You plot the plot the lines, both the lines, and then where they are intersecting. That is what. Okay, so we will talk about now we'll come to now we learned the conditions where we'll get one solution no solution infinitely many solution now we'll learn how to solve linear equations solving linear equations or solving a pair of linear equations in two ways so solving a pair of Linear equations. Linear equations in two variables. Okay. What are the methods? A is called graphical method. Okay, graphical method. There's a method to solve a linear pair of linear equations using graphs and then B is algebraic method. Algebraic method. And in this method itself there are multiple in this in this method itself there are multiple such methods. One is you know this is substitution. Then there is something called elimination. Many times this they call it elimination by equating the coefficients and all that. And then third is cross multiplication. So we haven't learned the last two. Yeah, okay. There's a fourth one, right? Yes. There, there are there are many more, but we are not going into. We'll see if time permits in the course. We'll, we'll teach you. There is something called Kramer's rule. There is something called determinants method. The couple of more methods to be discussed. Anyways, yes, now. So, uh, let's take this graphical method. Guys, let's take this graphical method and let's do it using examples. So, let us say I have a x plus y equals 1 and x minus y equals 2. These are the two linear equations, right? And I have to solve it graphically, okay? So, you remember these, right? Graphical method and then algebraic methods are these. Okay? So, let us now solve these two. Or I will draw the graph there itself. Say, let us say, this is my x and y coordinates. Okay? Now, let us, let us plot this x plus y equals to 1. C, for linear equations, you, if you want to plot a line, you just need two points. Why? Because line is nothing but defined by two points only, right? Now, 
So best method is put x equals to 0. What will you get as y? 1. So hence the point is 0 comma. Isn't it? Did you understand this step, guys? Yes, sir. I'm saying put x equals to 0. No, so you can do that all, but I'm just telling you a quicker method. Put x equals to 0. Y is 1. So the, the point is 0 comma 1. So where is that? Right? Now put y equals to 0. What will you get? <laughs> so you got the line? Into, did you need to draw tables? Not really. Next, put x equals to 0. Y is? Negative 2. Negative 2. So it is 1. Somewhere here. Yes. Put y equals to 0. x is 2. Yes. So point is, point of intersection is? Somewhere 1.5 and? 1.5 and? No, 1.5 and minus 0.5. 1.5 and minus 0.5. See, it's, it works. Minus 0.5. 1.5 and minus 0.5. So minus 1. Hey, 1.5 minus 0.5 is 1. No. So hence, this point is 1.5 comma point of intersection. Sorry. Now, what is the problem with graphical method? So it takes too much time. Okay. You need a graph. Okay. You, it takes a lot of time. You need a graph. But now, in, in uh, um, using graphics calculator, you can do a little quickly. But let's say if you are doing it manually, what is the biggest problem? Accuracy. Accuracy. Why? Because let's say here, the best advantage was all the coefficients were integers. What if it was something like this? Horribly looking. <laughs> root 7 x minus root of 251 y equals to root 1337. Okay. How it is not a polynomial? Anyways, it's not a polynomial, it's an equation. Huh? Anyway, next is let's say root of 21 by 6 x minus what is the birthday? Anurag? So what? Birthday. <laughs> 18 December. 18 December. So 1, 8, 1, 2. What's your birthday? 17 November. November. So divide by 17, 11. Y equals. What's your birthday? 13 September. 13 September. All of you are second half, huh? Zero nine. <laughs> and what's yours? Fifth Jan. Fifth Jan. So half, first half. Zero five, zero one. What about you? Uh, 7th August. You are 2nd half. Divide by 0, 07, <laughs> 0, 08. Now solve graphically. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Fun, huh? <laughs> now you will really enjoy this. Okay, even if you put x equals to 0 and try to find out y, you will get nightmares. So it becomes a little difficult. Right? If the coefficients are in irrational, Right? It, then graphical method is not accurate, so you should not be using it. Logarithms. You will have to use logarithms and all. You will not either you have to use calculators or you have to use logs. And again, accuracy is the. So what are logarithms? Logarithms are magic lines. We didn't. You didn't study. Not. With this year, we'll teach you. Don't worry. Okay. Now. Same equation by substitution. Not that one. Same equation. Why it's too easy? Do you want to so, do that? That one. <laughs> no, no, no. But birthday equation. So now we are talking about same equation. X minus what were the equations by the way? The equation. So now I am talking about substitution. Substitution as the name suggests. You have to represent or express one in terms of the other and then use that in the second equation, not back into the first equation. You'll get zero equals to zero. Okay? Many people many people have this habit of. Yeah? So you you sub, for example, what are the equations? Tell me. X minus X plus Y is equal to one. Is one and X minus Y is equal to two. Right? So let us let us say you substitute you express Y in terms of X. So Y is equal to 
1 minus x, isn't it? Now put this back into the same equation. <laughs> so you get 1 is equal to 1. No, no point. So hence you have to do what? You have to use this? Here. Yes. Yeah. So what will it be? x and y. So this y is that. So 1 minus x. x minus so that means x minus 1 plus x equals 2. So 2x equals 3. So 1.5. I don't want 0.5 only. Understood? Now, the moment I get x equals to 1.5, what do I do? So calculate y. Yeah. So put in any one of these equations and find the other variable, right? So 1 minus 1.5. So y is? Negative 1.5. So this Okay, this is called substitution. Substitution. Hmm? You guys are okay. Next, 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 next method is elimination. But for elimination, we will not use this simple looking. Yeah. Use that. No. I'll fulfill your dream. Wait, wait a minute. So now, next set of equation is. Let us say now I'm talking about elimination. How do we elimination? What is elimination? You eliminate one of the variables. How do I do it? Let us say we have two x minus three y equals seven and six x, or rather, let us say five x minus two y equals four. So how do I eliminate? Eliminate means I have to eliminate one of the variables. Choose any variable. Why? We want to eliminate y. Why? <laughs> you have to eliminate y. Um, but why? why? So because you multiply with the less number of thingy, so it's not as hard to calculate. Okay, thingy. So anyway, I'll tell you I'll tell you the full method. So let us say I want to eliminate x. See if I want to eliminate x, then I have to make sure, make do something so that the coefficient of x here and coefficient of x here either are same or are having opposite sign. That's it. Can multiply yep. So hence, what do I do? Multiply I multiply five, this by five, five and, and multiply this by two. two. So what will I get? I'll get ten x minus fifteen y equals thirty five. This one. Ten x minus four y equals eight. And then we do subtraction. If the sign is same, then you subtract. If the sign is opposite, then you just simply add. So hence, subtract. This will become plus. This will become minus. So this is 15 minus 15 plus 4y is minus 11y equals 8. 35 minus 8 is 27. Huh? No, 27. So y is negative 27 upon. Right? Now how to find out x? You substitute and find or eliminate again. Now this time eliminate y. No, this is much easier. I am telling you, this is much easier. You multiply this by 2. And this by 3. So multiply this by 2, you get? You multiply this by 2, you will get 4x minus 6y equals 14. And this one? 10x minus 6, sorry, you have to multiply by 3, no, so 15x. 15x minus 6y equals 12. Now sub subtract again, so you will get minus 11x equals 2. So x equals 2. Is it easier? Now check if it is correct. Linear equations you will face a lot of, you know, you'll, you'll make a lot of silly errors. So be very, very careful. So let us check. So it's, it's a good good thing to check again. So let's put here in the first one, 2x is how much? So 2 into minus 2 into minus 2 by 11, minus 3 into minus 27 by 11. Right? This must be equal to 7. Let's check. So it is nothing but minus 4 by 11. And this is 27, 3 is a minus 81. So plus 81 by 11 which is 77 by 11 which is check 
Elimination done. Last, cross multiplication also will. Now let us solve this by cross multiplication. Cross multiplication is nothing but what we did for consistency. You remember A1, B2, minus B2, A1 and all that. So let us, I will give you the trick for solving that. Let us say the same, but before you adopt or let's say you try cross multiplication, you have to ensure a few things. So now I am talking about cross multiplication. Okay. Cross multiplication. First of all, first of all, write these cross multiplication. Cross. What 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 is it? It look like a G. Cross, huh? Cross multiplication. Cross. Better? It's a C by O S S. <laughs> N2, you know, N2. Nit nitrous oxide. Huh? Yes. By any chance, you inhale that? Laughing, guys. Anyways, come back, guys. Okay. See, so what can I say about this equation? Uh, first thing is. Represent the two equations in the standard form. What is that? So, 2x minus 3y minus 7 equals 0. And then, 5x minus 2y minus 4 equals 0. It's not that you can't solve like this also, you know, itself. But then, follow one process, whichever you are finding. Okay? Now, what is, what is a1? Tell me. a1 equals to whether? Uh, 2 by 5. No, uh, two. A1, A1 only. 2. 2. A2? 5. Very good. Ishani, B1? 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. Gopika, B2? Minus 2. Shreya, C1? Minus 7. Anurag, C2? Uh, so I can't see this thing. Negative 4. Okay. Now, then what do you do? You write x like this. <coughs> Then you write y like that. Then you write 1 like that. x, y, 1. And then what do you do? You write here. You start with b1, b2 like that. Why would we take 1 like that? Yeah, so this is this is a shorthand. Now I'm taking telling you the technique. How we derive it, arrive at it was what was what we were discussing in the consistency wala part, where x equals to something by something. You remember that expression? So we'll, we'll, we'll try and prove that again, but just for the sake of understanding the process, let's learn the process and then get into how it is arrived at. Okay? So x is this, write b1 by b2, then write c1, c2, then again write a1, a2, and then again write b1, b2 like that. In cycles. So b, c, a, b, like that. Start with b, go to c, go to a, go to b, in that process. It is cyclical, right? B, C, A, B. B, then C, then again A, then again B, like that, okay? Now, this first, okay? And this second, remember like that. Top left to right bottom first, first, that's it, you have to, you have to remember. Then this, this, and this. What does it mean? It means simply this. You write x upon b1, b1, c2 minus b2, c1. Okay? Equals y, c1, a2 minus c2, a1. Equals, just a minute, 1 upon a1 b2 minus a2 b1. This is the now how do I find out x now? So basically you equate this to this. So why did you put up minus and So this is the formula, Shani. We'll come this is just how to remember is how to remember because this is a complicated thing. How will you remember? You can't really mug it up. So just to have a mind map for that, this is the trick. And then what is the 
how what is the final value then? So x is equal to how much? So x upon this is equal to 1 upon this, isn't it? So what will be x? You will pair these two. What will you get? x equals b1 c2 minus b2 c1 upon a1 b2 minus a2 b1. So, so after you get x, can you directly substitute it or do you need to solve for y? No, one, why you are doing cross multiplication? Go, work, go by this method only. So y is equal to? This equals to this, so y is equal to c1 a2 minus c2 a1 upon a1 b2 minus a2 b1. So for both we need to do cross -multiplication. Yes, for both you need to do cross -multiplication. Let's check the previous one. Okay, so let's, now tell me. So this is so much more complicated. No, one, one, this is there, it will not be. For these kind of equations, this is much easier. You feed in the value, find out the, in the calculator. Okay, now tell me, guys, uh, what is x? B1, C2. Tell me what is B1? Minus 3. Minus 3 into? Minus 4. C2? Minus 4. Minus, four. minus. B2? Minus 2 into? Minus 2 seven. into? Minus 7. C1? Minus 7. Divide by? A1? Two. Into? Two into minus 2. Minus 2. Then minus A2. 5 into minus 3. 3, 4. 12 minus 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 is minus 14. Minus 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 is minus. So no, it is minus 4 plus 15, which is minus 2 about upon. Yeah. Did we get the same value last time? No, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Ha, huh, so y? Denominator will remain the same? Yeah. What is y? C. Denominator is same in both cases. What is y? C1. Minus 7. Minus 7 into 5. Into 5. five. Minus 4 into minus. minus C2. C2 is? Minus, minus 4. 4 into 2. Into two. two. By, 11. by 11. So it is nothing but minus 35 plus 8 by 11, which is nothing but negative 27 by, was it the same value? Yes. Right? This is the third method of. So, uh, what is to be remembered? This map. x, y, 1, b1, c1, a1, b1, b2, c2, a2, b2. Then cross multiply. What is cross multiply? b1, c1. This side first, top down. Left to right, down. b1, c2 minus b2 c1 okay then c1 a2 minus c2 a1 then a1 b2 minus a2 b1 right how will you do this in the other way in the textbook version i'm sorry come here how will you do this in, in another way in the textbook so can you derive it huh. how will you do uh, it another no, way like, if it is on the trick, side this right? side no you told me this was a trick so how, how would the normal way go yeah so this is so basically this is this is the formula you have to mug up this is the formula you have to mark up, but is it convenient to mark up? How does it, how do we arrive at it? Very simple. We solve this. You remember by doing consistency, we got x equals to this, and we equated this to equal to 0. Why? Then it will become unreal, isn't it? So that is how, and then if you deploy the same thing back to one, the equation, you will get y value. But the formula is complicated. This is a general formula, right? For any equation, any, any pair of equation, it will work. And we did derive it, isn't it? Sometime back when we were dealing with consistency, we arrived at this point. You remember Veda? Now, but there we restricted ourselves only to x. Now if you put this x value in any of these equations, you will get the y value. It will be a little complicated in mathematics. Do you want me to do this? I can solve that. A pair of... Okay. Okay. Anyone is hungry?
chocolate is a treat. Anyone else? Yeah. But yeah, I have only three treats, so you'll have to distribute. Play. Ishani. Distribute. Have some chocolate. Anyone wants to eat samosa? Yeah. Yeah. Or you want chocolate? What chocolate is a spicy? It's okay. I'm like Anyone wants samosa? I can share. Anyone wants? Hey, bolna. No. Oh, it's so shiny. You give half the chocolate. Chocolate has the chocolate. How many chocolates are there? Three, four. What's the four? What's the four? Oh, there's you guys. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to do. Uh, I don't know. Okay.
Why, why do you have this? You can hold it and it won't fall off. Why do you want to do that? Because people who like this drop their phones a lot. Or they can just randomly Especially when you're like watching it in When you're seeing it. Just a Okay. Hi, guys. There's so many times I'm like, like, So stay away from phone. So sometimes it's required. I need to check the second watch Okay. I have heard this excuse a lot. Next. Sorry. I don't know it's almost over. You guys can't go back alone. So it's I late. What late? Huh? So 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock by cycle on HSR club. Hmm? I have to go to Sobad after and some sort of the So what effort is to papa? What effort is not that far? So what effort will carry that? So we always go alone, but huh? we always go alone. But my cycle was punctured. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. So there was a, oh, once upon a time your cycle was lost, no? Yeah. You. Mm -hmm. Panji, sir. Chalo, sawa, I lost my key. <laughs> Solve. Oh my god, she lost. <laughs> I am a farmer. Means I I am not accustomed to being air conditioned. Whichever you feel like, solve. Two x plus three y equals seven. Two x plus three y equals seven. And six x plus five y equals eleven. Any method or? Any method. And my dear friend, 6x plus 5y equals 11. All of you got it? Yeah. So no. no what's so what's the answer? Minus 1 by 4 equal to x and y is equal to 10 by 4. 10 by 4. X in decimals is 0 0.25. Huh? X in decimals will be 0 0.5. Correct. Minus 0 0.5. Yeah. Minus 0 0.5. Got it? I got it. Next. Cross, cross multiplication method. We'll solve like that, huh? Write down. Uh, 
um, 3x minus 5y equals 20. So no, don't write down. No, no, wait. Okay, so you write down. Yeah. 8x plus 5y is 9. 8x plus 5y equals 9. And 3x plus 2y equals 4. 8x plus 5y equals 9. And 3x plus 2y equals 4. So we have to use cross multiplication. 8x plus 5y equals 9. And 3x plus 2y equals 4. Done? Yeah, I have a habit of asking that. <laughs> I'll be asking. Done? No. Then you are looking up, that means done. Otherwise you will be looking on your... Done? Irritating, sir. <laughs> I know your expressions. Sir, irritating, shut up. What are you trying to look at Gopika? You know, Gopika is looking <laughs> bored. <laughs> Hello. Done? No, no sir. <laughs> which method are you using? Which, which method are you using? Uh, cross. Uh, do it. Okay, we use everybody. No. Cross. Please, please. What? So that's my first name. This Sunday you come down at 9 o'clock here, okay? Sunday, Saturday. We'll do maths. Maths problem so, problem. Uh, I got access to it. Yeah, but I cross multiplication. Access minus 2. Oh, sorry? With as little but cross, cross multiplication. I have seen it done. So there definitely there will be one question in boards using solve, solve the equations using cross multiplication. Then what will you do? I got, so then uh, I would leave that question. X to the power to minus 2. X is minus 2. And then you will get an anda. Don't tell me why. What? Zero. I got x is equal to two. Not x because it's a minus twenty. X equals two? Minus two. Minus two. Correct. Minus twenty. Don't tell me why. So how is it minus twenty? Minus two. Minus two. Not minus twenty. No, I'm. Alright. How is it minus two? Minus twenty plus eighteen. Are you using the formula? Then um, b one into c two. It's minus four. Did you get y is equal to five? Oh, you did. I got the formula wrong. Right. Did you get y equal to five? Oh, no, wait, wait. I have to ask for it. So is y equal to five? Negative yeah. one. Okay. So every, every right. right should be negative two. It should be negative six. Which would make that ten. Which would make that five. So next class, we will be doing Problem solving, word problem solving. How to convert what word problems into? So our teacher told us word problem we can use it. Ah, yes. There is no restriction. The twenty word problems are easier than. You can yeah. eventually you have to solve yeah, them. What happened with that? Fine, slow, a little. Bit. No worries. Take your time. Sir, can I take it? Please. Um, how is it minus two? I got two. Yeah, you're not taking you're not taking it to the other side. You're not taking it to the other side. Oh, so can I? Ah, please leave. Thanks for coming. There is a dustbin outside. Thank you. Sorry, you missed out. It's Oh, sir, I, uh, sir, Hello. sir, this formula come over here, like, regular? Yeah. No. 
Gubezo, oh, you three for our We would like it. Hmm? You would like it? Yeah. Even we would like it. So is it like a golden allow or what? Did the school like not allow or what happened? No, no, why? 9th graders, 10th graders, all are there, 11th graders are there. Why will Sir, but typically I might not be able to come on Wednesdays. What time? I, I had a, a discussion with you. Yeah. Mom. No worries, we'll see. So like Wednesday, so like after June, what, what is the time? Like just after school, what will come here? Sorry, same time. Oh. Same time, right now school is going on, right? Yeah. During summers, we'll have different times. Thank you so much. Hello, X is minus 2 and Y is 5. Yeah. Five. Brilliant. Very good. So, which one's on? Which one's off? So, so why did this happen? So I so didn't tell me. So this, why is it like this? What happened to Karthik here? So I don't think he can. He, I don't think he wants to come. Like especially for like this time. Same, same. Same. Especially for? So especially. Were there actually classes on Saturday or? No, Saturday. Uh, Friday is there, but Saturday is a practice class only. Okay. What only? We'll solve problems. Okay. So Sunday? Sunday. So Karthik Kair, I don't think he wants to come, especially at this time. Because we got sent to play at 8. Bye, sir. <laughs> <laughs>